Welcome the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees to order. It is, what, 7.02 p.m. on Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. Diane, please take the roll. Uh, Karen Diamond is running a little late. Uh, Carolyn? Here. Carol, Diane? Here. Patty? Here. Linda? Here. Tim? Here. Sue? Here. Great, thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Tonight we have a special guest for the presentation of the audit. So we'll give him a chance to go first. This is uh, Michael Devalia from uh, Waterbach and Anana. Amen or not? And amen. 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 Yes, I'd say two of them at the same time there. <laughs> All right, so am I done? Yes, you are. Thank All right, you. so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Del Valle, Managing Auditor with Lottery Rock and Amen. Um, you'll see on the agenda, originally, my coworker Jennifer Martinson was planning on attending. Uh, my schedule happened to work out uh, beneficial this afternoon, so I've been able to attend. Um, first, before we jump into this, I'd like to say a uh, big thank you to Greg and Susan and the team, um, especially as a first-year audit, you know, first-year client, kind of never know what you're walking into necessarily, so to come into an audit, have clean material to work with, you know, friendly, hospitable people to work with makes all the difference. Um, I conduct about 30 library audits a year, so I'm pretty versed in the library world here. Um, and so uh, you kind of do the same work for a lot of them. So having good people and good material to work with makes all the difference. So I'll start with that. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is sticking to a fairly quick high-level overview of the audit this afternoon. If you have questions as I'm going through, please feel free to stop me and ask questions. After, I'll also open up for questions. And after tonight, if you're going through and have additional questions, please feel free to go through Greg if you have any questions that you'd like answered, and we can address those next. Okay. Alrighty, so you're going to start with the larger of the packets, so the formal audit here. So immediately after the table of contents, we come to the independent auditor's report. So essentially, the auditor's report stating the audit's been completed. Uh, main takeaway from this is that we've issued an unmodified opinion, which is a clean, highest level of opinion that can be issued. Following the independent auditor's report is the management discussion and analysis, the MDNA section. We like to say that that's not. Could you say which page you're in? Um, three, right after three. the auditor's letter, yeah. Three. So we like to say it's just a high level executive overview of the audit at the government wide level. Um, we like to tell people if you're going to read any part of the audit, this is a good place to get an idea for the fiscal year without having to read the actual formal you know, financial statements themselves. So following the MDNA section, if you can meet me on page 14. So 14, we come to the balance sheet for the main governmental funds. And these are typically the funds you may see on a monthly basis as a board as we're reviewing the budgets and approving expenses. So here we have the general the capital projects, our special reserve, and our non-major funds, which we will get to towards the end of the audit as well. So on the front page here, we can see our assets, liabilities, fund balance for each of the funds. Two pages over on page 16. This is our statement of revenue expenditures and change in fund balance for each of the funds. So the third line from the bottom is kind of the uh, total net change in fund balance for the fiscal year. So we can see the general fund, we had an increase of about a million and a hundred thousand dollars. Capital project, the special reserve, we had a decrease of 390. And our non-majors, which again we'll get to at the end, had the increase of about 50,000 overall. So something I'd like to point out is the ending fund balance of our 8.3 million. Um, so what we typically see, especially in the library world, as we continue to build our general fund, um, you know, in speaking with Greg and during the audit, I understand there are certain capital projects that are coming down the line, whether that be a roof replacement, certain technology upgrades that need to take place in the future. So especially in this case, we see one of two things happen. 
is either the general fund, we will build the fund as we are seeing here, as we continue to increase our fund balance in preparation for these type of expenses. Or in addition, sometimes what we'll see is clients recognize the large increase in the fund balance and then choose to do large transfers every year to our special reserve funds to build up our balance there. So we can see special reserve, we're still continuing to have capital improvements come out of that, but we're just building up the general fund, fund balance as opposed to transferring that out. And part of the benefit of that is the general fund's a catch-all. So if we ever need money in a special reserve fund, we ever need money in the non-major funds, we always have the option to transfer out of our general to cover other areas. Whereas once we take it out of that and put it to a um, you know, protected fund, we cannot take it out of those. So to build up the general fund is kind of where we see a lot of you know, library and clients building up our main funds as well. Following the statement of revenue expenditures, we come to page 18, which begins the notes to the financial statements. So I'm not going to cover these in detail, but to summarize, in the government world of accounting, there are certain items that are required and not required to be in the formal financial statements that we just viewed. So the notes to the financial statements will cover some of these specific items, such as long-term liabilities, capital assets, and things of that nature that, again, are not required to be in the financial statements, but are still significant to the audit, which is why we include them in these notes to the financials. So if we can go to page 27, which is note three, I just want to point out really quick here. So note three is our capital assets. And as I mentioned before, these are not reported at the general fund or the fund level of accounting. So when we saw that 400,000 decrease in the capital project special reserve, we can see in our increases for the year, you know, we had over 200,000, I believe a big chunk of that was for a chiller we purchased. Um, so when we see those de decreases in special reserves, and then we see these large capital improvements, you know, that's kind of hand in hand where those are coming from then. <coughs> so following those, if you can meet me at page 51. So page 51 brings us to our non-major governmental, these special revenue funds. So 51 and 52 are the balance sheets. So we have our assets, liabilities, and fund balances. Following on page 53, 54, we can see these statement of revenue expenditures and change in fund balance. And again, third line from the bottom there, we have the net change in fund balance. And essentially all of our funds, we show decreases with the exception of the unemployment and the building and site funds, which we show increases for. Um, special revenue funds are definitely a topic of conversation with a lot of my libraries lately. Um, how much we're maintaining in the fund balances, how much we're levying for. Um, so to that point, you know, the fund balances we're seeing in our special revenue funds are relatively healthy. We have the two which are negative fund balances, but to that point, having a healthy fund balance in the general fund always gives us options to transfer as needed to our special revenue funds as well. So I even have a handful of libraries that at the end of every year, they just do a single transfer to their special revenue funds, get those all to zero, and then move on with the next year. So, and that's all, you know, kind of management decisions as far as how they want to levy for those and connect any transfers going forward. I'm sorry, Michael. You yeah. said they transfer to the funds and get them to zero? Yeah, so for, you know, so like our audit fund here, you know, a negative $2,800 fund balance oh, 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 is nothing to worry about at all. No one likes seeing those negative amounts, so they say we'll just transfer 2817 at the end of the year. Some clients wait till we have our first draft of the audit, see what the fund balances come out to, and then at that point the board approves a transfer just to get those all zeroed out. So going back to the, they like the healthy fund balance in the general fund mm -hmm. to have their options open. So that is all I have for the formal financial. Tim, just one oh. word, uh, just one word about the uh, negative fund balances in the two funds. Uh, we should be positive in the next cycle, by the next cycle. What's the cycle? What do you mean cycle? Uh, next fiscal cycle. So the next next fiscal year by the next okay. uh, 
you know, by June uh, 2020, those, you know, those deficits should be. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and as we can see, you know, we had that increase of almost 90,000 alone in the building and site fund folks. So, you know, just another year of that will put us over that part then. So the other packet you have with you is the management letter comments. <coughs> Uh, management letter comments we like to say are just strong suggestions that we like to you know bring to the board's attention um, so basically as we're conducting an audit if there's any type of suggestions we have or practices that would need to be adjusted that's where we would point those out is in these MLCs we call them um, so before we even look at these I just want to point out that these management letter comments that we issued, especially for a first year client, are almost on there 90% of the time. These are uh, black and white. If you have it, you don't get it. If you don't, you do get it. So it's not that these are on here because we think something huge is missing. It's just a matter of fact, if there's no policy in place, we will issue these. And also, all of these that are on here have been implemented and established since the audit has taken place. So. It's just a matter of if they're not in place as of the fiscal year and they were auditing, we throw these on here, but then we have the management response as well. So the first one was fund balance policy. So basically fund balance policy, capital asset policy, and outstanding check write-off policy are the three that we had issued. The first two fund balance policy and capital asset policy, um, we just like to see all of our clients have those type of policies in place. It's good to have something in place that once we start to build up certain fund balances or capital projects, we have a plan in place for how we're going to address those. The outstanding check write-off policy is something new that we've been giving to clients just because we started to see a lot of uh, clients build up a lot of outstanding checks without getting them cleared. So that's something, something more firm stance that we've chosen to start addressing more with our clients as well. Um, and so especially with first-year clients, as I mentioned, when it comes to the management letter comments, these are something we, something we take very seriously. And for first-year clients, we try to, I don't want to say necessarily build these up or point things out you know, except, excessively, but this is a good opportunity for us to address important issues or topics that we think would be important for the board to, to have on their radar. And the fact that the only ones we have are the very, very typical policy MLCs that speaks volume to the library, to Greg and his team, and to how they're conducting you know, the, the functions within the finance department. Um, as I said, I do 30 libraries a year. I see all kinds of the same transactions being handled in different manners, different types of support, um, and especially someone with Greg's background. You know, I take that into consideration. Um, so when we're doing our testing, we're doing random invoice selections, random deposit selections, and kind of just picking things throughout the year, you know, testing the client, testing the controls in place. And this is absolutely something that if we had any type of inkling or feeling that something wasn't being handled properly, if we thought the deposit support invoices, approval of payments or deposits weren't being processed or handled in a certain manner, that's something you would see pop up in an MLC, okay? So like I said, especially for first year, um, and I myself, especially when I have someone as skilled as Greg, I come in and everything's ready, everything's clean. So I kind of like to use that as an opportunity to do a couple more deposit selections, a couple more invoice selections, and asking questions, requesting material, and having everything turned over so quickly. Any questions we have, you know, good answer to or quick follow-ups with it. Uh, so like I said, that just speaks volumes to you know, Greg and the team, and also just as an auditor, makes me feel comfortable um, with the type of material we're using to prepare these financial statements as well. Okay, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> so, and like I said, like, it's just, um, especially first-year clients, I like to give constructive criticism. Not everybody has a finance department. You know, a lot smaller libraries are kind of doing the best that they can. So I'm always up for constructive criticism or giving advice where I can. Um, and that's just not something that I felt necessary this year. So, now if Greg could step out, we can talk. Every time. <laughs> 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 Is it my turn? Is it my turn? Is it my Is it my turn? 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 Is it my
Honestly, I do not. Uh, our, our partner, Jamie Wolke, was out here with us on, on the audit as well. Um, and Jamie is just magnitudes higher than my level, and she can come out for a day on the audit. Um, and uh, just, like I said, very, very clean audit, um, especially with first year clients. We go over certain you know, accounting practices, questions, things of that nature. And like we said, uh, all the conversations, any questions we had, had very good responses, and we were comfortable with the uh, accounting practices that were taking place. No red flags. No red flags. Thank you. Do we have any questions for that? I have a few. Yeah. Uh, did you, um, regarding the um, management letter, yeah. um, where the auditors mentioned some more significant improvements affecting the internal controls and procedures, uh, did you say we implemented all of them? Mm -hmm. Correct. So the three policies that we issue MLCs for, you can see the following of each one has a management response. So essentially... So did we implement the policy or did we implement the procedures to reach the policy guidelines? So at this point, at, as the end of the fiscal year, mm -hmm. these policies were not in place, which right. is why we issued these. As they were implemented in October, I can't speak to if you know a policy was implemented and then actions were taken to meet that policy. I'm oh, just, so you're I'm just, just speaking, just speaking to the as of the fiscal year end. Policy. Correct. So oh, this time that next year, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So this time next year, we will have the fund balance policy, capital asset policy to have to test with the audit as well. And then our library will comply with all these um, significant improvements that you mentioned. Correct. Okay, so because yeah. I mean, there's quite a bit here, and I'm thinking we've already complied. I mean, it, it, it's not physically possible. No, ab absolutely. Okay, no. all right. My mis I misunderstood what you meant by that. Um, I, I do um, want to mention in your um, management letter. Um, I have to say I disagree with waiting an entire year for the library to be compliant with these procedures, and okay. then. You, the auditing company would come back out and review the status. I mm -hmm. mean, these are just the tip of the iceberg, and um, I think they're really important that we should jump on this immediately okay. and hopefully try to see the library accomplish this by maybe end of March, and then have the auditors come back out and give us a status at that time. To wait an entire <coughs> year with all of these um, different, um, what did you, how did you word it, uh, these controls and procedures, methods that we are not doing to wait another year, that's pretty massive. And I think it's only going to affect everything else we're doing in the library because we base our comments, our information on what we're doing and we're sort of missing the mark by not having any of these controls in place and to wait an entire year I mean, especially the next three months at the library is one of the slowest seasons. Okay. And so, I, I am concerned about the magnitude. I, I actually, I, I'm, I'm grateful that you pointed them out. Okay. Uh, it's something that I think is important that we all become aware of. We can only benefit by correcting all of this. Correct. And so to, you make a lot of points. So I guess to, I guess my, my immediate feedback would be, First of all, these MLCs we issued are, are very common. Um, and something we take into consideration as well is, yes, the policies weren't in place before. They are now. And there's, I'm sure, action being taken to, to comply with those policies. But that doesn't mean that no consideration was being taken into prior to that as well. So when we have a, a capital asset listing, capital asset detail, that we didn't have a policy in place before, that doesn't mean that the capital asset detail and the capital asset items we had, there wasn't consideration being thought of going into Well, I know for a fact like this that. information that mm -hmm. you detailed that is missing does not exist because I've asked for it. Okay. okay. So I'm glad that you've pointed it out because it is, it's crucial to this library to mm -hmm. minimally at least get started with this. Yeah. And I understand your level of auditing is definitely at a different level, mm -hmm. but this is really important. Yeah. So I'm concerned about the controls that we don't follow. I understand the paper policy that we received from you and now we've implemented. That's wonderful. Yeah. But I, I, I'd like to see us jump on this sooner than wait an entire year 
because things start to get lost and, and to continue not having this information available I think is important. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously it's important because, you know, we, we did issue those. Um, and, and I'll go back to using our discretion as auditors and our understanding of the management and, uh, you know, the management's understanding of accounting and how they're handling the functions and the, the financial functions. Um, quite frankly, we have clients that we've issued fund balance policy management letter comments to year after year after year, and they refuse to implement it because they have a very accounting savvy finance department, they have a very accounting savvy board, they say we have strong fund balances, we know what's in them, we move money when we need to, we have money when we need it, but if we have a policy, we have to stick to it. So that's an example of a very accounting savvy and financially responsible group understanding their, understanding their fund balances and the activity that's happening in the library, but deciding that a policy in place would then kind of limit them to future, um, future you know, decisions as well. So and that's why the whole thing is, 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 is board implemented, um, and those are things to take into consideration as those policies you know, are put in place as well. So uh, yeah, to, so to your point, you know, they're, they're very important, yeah, the, but, the but there's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes aside from you know, just the policies on paper as well. Well, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm concerned about. All the procedures that need to be implemented, which mm -hmm. you've outlined, I'd like yeah. to see us consider jumping on that a lot sooner than a year. But that's regarding the management letter. I did have a couple questions about the audit. Okay. Um, regards to special revenues yeah. and um, how we're constantly talking about, you know, it runs a little thin because it covers, I think it's Social Security, workman's compensation. I think the auditor's fee is also in there. Correct. And personally, from conversations I've had with other um, accountants and auditors, they seem to think that to have another fund, like a revenue fund, mm -hmm. to handle Social Security, workman's comp, and the, the other line items is almost more work than just paying these bills outright, paying Social Security directly out of your general fund, paying the auditor's fee directly out of the general fund. And when I look at the library's expenses, I mean, I think our payment to CSS or CCS is monumental compared to what we'd ever be writing for Social Security. And I was always in favor of dissolving special revenues and just automatically having accounting make these payments when they're due. And as far as Social Security and anything affected by payroll, we have um, numerous payroll supervisors here, but I know we also enlist PACOM for payroll. So I'm thinking the process shouldn't be that complicated. But just in terms of transferring money and having to have this fund exist, is it not possible to just make these payments directly from general funds and it would be one less fund to monitor? I'm going to give you a much shorter answer than you may like. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's completely board and management decision. We have clients that have all these exact same special revenue funds. They're happy with it, that's how they do it. We have clients that have a general fund, a special revenue fund, and that's it. And they levy for all of these the same, but pay everything out of general. So they, they avoid these separate funds and do everything out of general. And so we have some clients that choose to do that. We have a lot of clients that do it the exact same way here, and both are doing perfectly fine. And able to levy for and expense those transactions perfectly fine both ways. So okay. total total board and management decision. Okay, all right, well that takes care of that then. And Let then me add some uh, uh, further information to that. First of all, uh, the payments to CCS come up to about $90,000 a year. And uh, Social Security payments are uh, for the library are approximately 250000 So just the opposite of what um, you had posited, uh, Carolyn. Is Social it's, Security a one-time payment? I no, so it's, it's Social Security. Every time, every time they take a dollar out of a pay, we take a dollar out of pay a paycheck. Period. We pay a dollar to Social Security. Right. So Security. what I'm saying, it's smaller increments that you would be issuing. Uh, it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year divided by twelve, so about twenty thousand. Right. But what I'm month. saying is the number of the pay, the check, the individual check is not that. Monumental. Well, it's, it's not. It's actually not a check. It's it's a um, it's a singular 
um, uh, transfer to PACOM, who uh, handles all of the uh, disbursements to the uh, Social Security Administration on our behalf. So all we're doing is making bookkeeping entries. That's the first point. The second point is that um, the general fund for the library has a cap. I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have a cap. It's 0.6% it's uh, as, as the county uh, has, of course. So by having these separate funds, what we're doing is removing uh, items from under that cap. So should we get close to the, you know, should we get close to that cap? And we haven't been. The highest we've been, I think, since I've been here is 5. Point, um, I'm sorry, 0.512% or something like that. So we were within, you know, 88 hundredths of, uh, of hitting the cap um, in total. Uh, right now our, our uh, overall tax rate is somewhere like in the mid 0.4 something, like 0.447 or 0.474, I can't remember off the top of my head. But the point is, is by having these separate funds, we're not burdening the general fund in taking up part of its cap, taking up the room for, you know, for its cap. So it gives us more flexibility. Um, all of the funds that, you know, where we pay money, where we pay money, it's all paid out of the same checking account. We don't have six separate, seven separate checking accounts, um, one for each fund. We have a common checking account. We do the accounting in order to make sure that it's spread. Some of the funds, they only have one payment. Like um, uh, workers, li li uh, workers, workers compensation, liability insurance, they have one payment during the year. But what's nice about having a separate fund and tracking it that way is that we could uh, remove it from the funds, uh, from the overall cap of the general fund. Well, my point in dissolving the um, special revenues fund was to just not have to maintain another fund and the checks that you just cut from for the gen, for the general revenues fund could be cut out of the um, I mean out of general funds as opposed to revenues and it would be just one less account that we had to fund but I have a question about the cap of the general fund at 0.6 percent mm -hmm. um, is that the dollar amount available that we have to no it's a tax it has to do with the tax rate so does the so the tax rate can never exceed 0.6 percent for the general fund. So the tax rate, meaning the amount of money we can spend from the general mm -hmm. fund, is the amount of money that we uh, the the amount of money that the uh, uh, county collects on our behalf mm -hmm. cannot be greater than 0.6 percent of the equalized assessed valuation of our district. Oh my gosh! So that's our total. That's our entire budget. Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying. I mean, well, to the extent that you know. Well, then this we're fine. This comprises ninety-five percent. Yeah, then we're fine because the general revenues fund is one of the smallest, and we we tend no, to carry like over. No, the, the general revenue fund. Uh, the general fund is the largest fund. That we have. No, general revenues is not large. So if we would be able to dissolve general revenues and have it paid out of the general fund, there should be no problem to be to facilitate those payments. Well, um, I will tell you that uh, following the uh, economic crash in 2008, when all of the property values in the in the uh, district uh, declined uh, uh, dramatically, mm -hmm. uh, we started to get close. We were at overall we were at 0.512. Well, we've been, we've been, I think, what was the term you and uh, you used is we've been uh, costing down or spending down those accounts for years, so I'm sure they did, but actually, we, we carry about a million dollars a year. Well, are, you, are, you, so are, you, are you trying to make a, general, a proposal for the board so, to consider so taking we're, those funds? I'm trying to say there's no risk involved in trying to do this because sure. every year we end the year with at least a million dollars. Sure. All right. Do you want to make a proposal? So, actually, I'm not finished with my questions, but that okay. was one suggestion. Uh, I have another question about assets. Um, okay. I noticed in their capital assets mm -hmm. that um, they're categorized by more than $100 needing um, the board to authorize its conveyance or sale. 
And is that an item for one hundred dollars? Is that how you look at that? Are you looking at the? Is there something specific that you can? Oh God, I, I wrote it down from. It's under capital. It's probably. Um, so, Michael, the policy that uh, that the board passed in October. Okay. Um, uh, there's a, a section of the policy which has to do with the uh, disposal of assets. Okay. And um, so some assets, um, by the time that the library is finished with them, have zero value. And, um, you know, like computers for the, for the most part are so used yeah. that you couldn't, I mean, they have a market value of zero for all intents and purposes. So we don't want to bother the board with getting rid of assets that have a zero value. Uh, some assets that we turn over have um, have a value much higher than zero. You know, maybe three or four or five thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. We sold a van one time when uh, when we bought a new van to replace it. Okay. So um, so what we do is we approach the board with an ordinance to dispose of the van. Okay and say, we're going to get rid of the van, we're going to hold it for sale, um, and we get permission from the board to transact. Gotcha. Um, that, I think, is what you're referring to, Carol. Okay. So I, don't think, I don't think you'll find it in those pages. It's in the policy that we actually passed. Okay. Actually, it was something I read in here, and I wanted to... So basically, we take it to the board and say, we have this van, we bought it for X amount. Right now, it's book value or market value Correct. is mm -hmm. X. We're proposing we sell this. Sounds great. Anything under certain thresholds, we say, hey, computers, miscellaneous equipment, we'll just sell it if someone wants to buy it. It's so immaterial, no need to bother the board, right. which sounds excellent. We have clients that do computer sales all the time. Yep. Um, and uh, but like you said, to your point, selling of larger, you know, items. Uh, yeah. But more specifically, my question was really seen in regards to the fact, since we're a library, okay. a lot of the items that we are removing are books, and every book is not worth $100, although, you know, they could be 20 or $30. So what I'm trying to ascertain is if we spend over $300,000 a year in uh, library materials, but yet each library material, if we consider a book, is only worth 40 or $50, how do we... How do we account for that? I mean, we could get rid of thousands of books and... And there's, there's a revenue line on for book sales. You know, well, I don't know that it's edit. always book sales. I think it's removing them, like four and five copies of a book we don't need and yeah. they just get rid of them. Yeah. So are we never accounting for this dollar amount because each book is less than 100? Um, so... <clears throat> I don't think. I, I think you're you're asking a very high level question for something very small in the material. I mean, you probably get rid of a thousand books a month. Half of them are thrown out from you know just being so used and worn down. Half of them probably never get returned. Some of them, you know, someone ends up just buying it. You know? Well, actually, so. I've seen dumpsters with probably five thousand books in them, and I was trying to figure out how do we track this. Oh, they're not dumpsters, just to be clear. I don't want it to say that. They, they are, it's they're carts to be that that company comes and takes, and they resell those books. Okay, but I'm just trying to figure out as a library, since every book is expensive but not $100, how do we how how do we include that in these assets we're getting rid of, since they're not $100 each? A strictly board management decision. From an auditor perspective, it's it's so immaterial. That the dollar amount, the board? dollar amount, really, you know, it's just because you guys, you, we, you know, we keep track of the, the purchasing of them, but uh, it would be immaterial and, and not very effective for us to worry about the tracking of that necessarily. So we have no idea what the total amount is, though. Okay, that's I fine because we weed out constantly. Okay, that's there, fine. There's still a leading report when it, when you lead books. There's a leading report, and you just put a minimal amount of money on it because that's part of having a library. Sure. That comes in and out. It's just the constant rotation. I'm sure it is, but also I think it's nice to have reports so you can say, "Wow, we've been ordering four or five books. We're going to stop that." I mean, I just want to know: is there some checks and balances in place? Because I didn't hear of any kind of reporting on this at all. So I thought maybe because I'm sure if we repeat three hundred thousand dollars every year in books, there's got to be a lot more than a couple thousand going out the door. Yeah. Is, is okay, well, that was my other policy. 
Susan, do you guys have a weeding policy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Development okay. manual. Okay. Certainly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's the specifically yes. outlines yeah. how that happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then my last yeah. question is long term um, liabilities like IMRF. Yes. Okay. Yes. They're not included in the um, in the audit. Correct. But we know that we have X number of dollars that we will have to pay mm -hmm. in the future. So how do we connect that amount with so that's basically all determined through IMRF. And the only reason I smile when you ask that question is because all that actuarial work, mm -hmm. I'm so happy I'm not involved in any of that. Mm -hmm. Actuary and taxes, I never want to touch. Um, and, and basically, IMRF is doing all that math for us. And year to year, they adjust the IMRF rate for the contribution rate. Um, and that's basically how they're accounting for So that. as a library, we don't need to be concerned about in the future needing to pay for you do not need a okay. side bank of I, 200 grand in case you know someone decides well, to Well, and then when I read that it's not included, I'm like, wait, so how do we know yeah. that we're covering all this? And that's, that's, I don't that's understand. Right. What do you mean it's not included? I'm, I'm it says that it's not part of the um, audit. It's just in the government-wide and not the... So I'm looking at page, I'm looking at page 12 of the, uh, of the statement of that position on, on the big one. And... Uh, under liabilities, mm -hmm. about uh, I'd say about a third of the a uh, third of the way down the page, it says net pension liability IMRF three hundred and ninety-seven thousand yes. seven hundred. Oh, that's for now. I'm saying the future payments will have to pay. So what happens uh, is that IMRF looks at each individual employee um, and applies assumptions to them. Um, what their raises will be, what their pay levels will be, what their retirement date is, how long they'll live, uh, and then how much that will result in a stream of payments going out well into the future. For somebody who's on the verge of retirement, those, those numbers will loom very large. For somebody at the beginning of their career, they won't have to pay out anything for 35 years. So. Um, recognizing that, what um, IMRF does is applies an interest rate to it. And the question is, if I have to pay one dollar in 35 years, how much do I have to have in the bank in my account today? Based, you know, including all the assumptions on earnings and stuff like that. So um, it might come to, down to something like five cents. And IMRF's investment management team operating under its policies will take that five cents and invest it and it'll grow year over year until it's a dollar in the year that that dollar has to be issued. When they do that for each employee uh, under the library's uh, account, they add it all up and they end up with a net pension liability of 397782 which is, which should be, all that you ever have to pay. But what happens over time is that in some years, the, the fund earns a tremendous amount of money. And in some years, it doesn't earn very much. And in other years, it loses. So on a year-to-year -year basis, this number is going to fluctuate. And, uh, you know, based on what I'm seeing in the markets so far, we might be even or better at the end of next year. Uh, but all that, I mean, there's still six weeks left in, in the uh, calendar year, so anything can happen, as they say. The, um, uh, the interesting thing about this liability is that last year, the IMRF uh, board decided to lower their interest rate from 7.5 to 7.25, okay? Um, what that had the impact of doing, uh, what that had, the impact of doing that was that it added approximately $160,000 to our liability, okay? And the reason that it did is because um, the lower the interest rate or the discount rate is, 
the higher your liability is. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. Our $1 that's going to be paid way out in the future, 35 years, if the interest rate was zero, we'd have to have a dollar today mm -hmm. instead of five cents. Mm -hmm. So if the interest rate is seven and a half percent and we have five cents, and they change the interest rate to, to 7.25 percent, they lower it, that means that we have to have maybe mm -hmm. six cents, mm -hmm. okay? And, you know, so you're going to see annual fluctuations in this. The important thing to remember is that this is a long-term play, and if we pay to IMRF, and we do, because in order to be a part of IMRF, you have to, you have to pay. Uh, if you pay what they recommend that, that we pay, then everything will work out actuarially. Right now, our, um, our contribution rate for every dollar earned under IMRF is 5.31%. In, uh, uh, in January, it changes to 7.3%. And the reason it changes to 7.3% is because they had a bad year last year. And we have a liability. So we, you know, the, the rates are, uh, are constructed out of what's called normal cost. If you work today, how much, do, how much does my employer have to pay in order to cover my to cover my uh, uh, retirement. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, they pay, uh, you pay, like it's a mortgage, you, you pay on, on the balance that you owe, the $397,000. Uh, so then, they, then they'll multiply that by, their, by the interest rate, and then they'll tack that on and develop, and develop uh, a contribution rate. Are the employees never pay more than 4.5%? Uh, the payments for, from the employer will fluctuate over time based upon a number of factors, most importantly and most glaringly, the, uh, the performance of the markets. Okay. So when the market does well, okay, it's not just the Dow, it's all, there's all sorts of financial markets out there that comprise the financial system. When the markets as a group do well, cheer because it reduces our costs and reduces our liability, or maybe creates a uh, surplus. Would it behoove us to start paying some of this liability? Well, we got to a point on the initial liability where we paid it all in. We paid $2, uh, $2 million in one year and then 532000 in the following year. Okay, uh, That money is still there. It just didn't grow as fast as we wanted to. Um, one way to look at it is that you have a $400,000 debt that you're paying 7.25% interest on, and we don't earn that. So we could pay that, you know, if that's, if that's something that you wanted to do. Based on performance I'm seeing so far in the markets this year, I think it'll turn around to a great degree. And maybe we should just, you know, just let it ride for a little while and, you know, and if it persists, maybe consider it. Okay. But, yeah. I agree. Okay, Greg, thanks for that. I finished it. Other questions? Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah. Uh, no, you're, you're next. Okay. Um, I'm This is Michael. Hi there. Nice to meet you. And uh, uh, if I repeat some question, I apologize. If I do, just tell me and I can probably get the information from someone else. Okay. okay. So, um, the small booklet, the management letter, you recommended. Uh, you made three recommendations for changing policies regarding the fund balance policy, the debt loss of policy, the outstanding check write-off policy, and we did enact those policies that are October. I mean, Correct. If you look at the bottom of each one, there's actually yeah. a management response. Yeah, right. So what we, uh, uh, sorry. I, I, I was just sorry. wondering if, if the policies we enacted sort of met your recommendations. Um, We've seen the policies. I have not evaluated them okay. in the sense that I would for conducting the audit. So I don't want to speak too much to that point. Um, but uh, yes, we did acknowledge the, the implementation of them and did receive those. Um, but to that point, I don't want to speak too much on that fact, just because at the time of the audit, they were in place. And so I did not evaluate them to the extent of conducting the audit. 
Okay. And Michael did, uh, was kind enough to provide examples of policies that they were satisfied with. Okay. And, and, and we modeled based on those. Okay, oh, right. cool. I mean, a couple of them were fairly simple about yeah. Yeah. check well, that's policy nice and doing a lot of the the, similar uh, clients. Managing the yeah. policy regarding our fund balance, which yeah. we just really tweaked a little bit. I think the board did such a great job in passing them that Michael will be compelled to use them as examples going forward. <laughs> nice. I, I do think ours were really superb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's nice too is it, every it's a pretty tight knit group, the, the library group. So if I have a new client that they need help, you know, implementing something, I'll call Greg. Hey, Greg, can I use your guys as an example? Sure. Send over the example. Send over a blank template, and then uh, let the, the board take it from there. Okay. So. Um, I have one other question. Again, if this is something you've addressed already, it's just coming and I will okay. put the information. Um, you, you mentioned in your letter, um, uh, under other matters, uh, you mentioned RSI, required supplementary information. Can you give a very short description of what that is and how that figures into So, your required supplementary informa information, um, we're basically including additional, you know, budgetary and type figures at the end of the audit report that wouldn't be included in the formal type financial reports as well. So sometimes you'll see the, you know, budget to actuals, what was the approved budget compared to what the actuals were. Um, and if the budget to actual figures are off or we were over budget on certain items as well, we will issue management letter comments for those as well. You know, so if we had any type of large items that were over budget, you would have seen those pop up in here as well. All right. Um, I don't think I have any other questions, but I did have a question or two for Greg. A comment was made about why we have all these different uh, funds. It doesn't cost us anything to have these no. funds. In fact, we have money in one account or more. Right. And they're really just sort of an accounting uh, function that you perform in terms of breaking out the actual yeah, that's absolutely that correct. are in each one of the funds. But there's no additional cost in that. No. No. Okay. That's my cue. Just finally, the caps you, Greg, the caps you referred to are commonly known as tax caps, right? Yes. And that's what we've been living with for, I don't know, 20 years or so? Yes. Or I can't recall. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Chris? Okay. Um, my questions have been answered. Great. Thanks. Yeah. And like I said before as well, if you have questions, please feel free to go through Greg so I don't have to talk again. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, it's it's my pleasure. Thank you. Wait, may I ask you just a follow-up question? <coughs> Sorry to keep talking. No, no, it's okay. I'm better, I'm better now. Um, I just want to be sure that I understand this properly. That you made the three recommendations for the three policies. You did not make them because you looked at our practices and said, oh my gosh, these people are really screwing this up. They need a new policy. Isn't it just that each library should have a policy like 100%. this? 100%. And like and I said, there's, there's management and people who handle the finances that without policies are very conscious of them, very you know fiduciary responsible. It's just, like I said, we have the best accountant in the world. If they don't have something formal in place, they're going to get it. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Good point. Where so are you saying these recommendations aren't necessary for us to follow? That's not what I'm saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying there's just a lot, a lot more, oh, okay. more to the whole thing. Yeah. OK. Linda, do you have anything? <clears throat> no. So, Thank you. Yeah. Great. All right, well, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you all next year. You're welcome to stay for the meeting. I'll watch it later. You guys got a nice setup on the website, Ted. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we will now continue with the uh, meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of October 16, 2019? So motion. Second. Second. Great. Any changes? Um, I think I have a couple. Anyone else want to go first? I have a couple. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I just have a couple typos. Uh, let's 
proceedings. Page, oh, page six. Um, under unfinished business, it says discussion to determine to determine. Sure, we can. Yeah. Um, sure. Does it? <laughs> oh, also, the one million is that is we M M on that? Is that no, we mean one. Or should it be one M? One, one M. And then um, also ordinance be prepared for the, shouldn't it be November board meeting? Okay, that's very good. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, the other ones are just, you know, you know it doesn't matter. My English teacher came on. <laughs> um, I think that's everything I have. Okay. Okay. All right, page six as well. Um, Trustee Derblick, um, let's see. I'm oh, Trustee Derblick su suggested that the director's report be showcased on the library website. Okay. Actually, I wasn't talking about the director's report. What I would like to switch that sentence to is Trustee Derblick suggested departments upload their monthly highlights directly to the website for all to see. I'm talking about that section that involves all of our different departments, not all of our information. I don't remember you saying it like that. I remember you saying the director's report. That's one thing I do remember. No, in the director's report. I'm not interested in... Well, well anyway, that's fine. I heard that's what I heard you yeah, support. So, so, okay. That was our understanding. Okay, I'll check the tape, though, and let you know. Go ahead. That? All right. Because I know I went on about the details. But page 7 is another one um, where it says she does not... You. Oh no, it is, what did I put? Paragraph 6. Um, it says she does not feel the board receives enough information. Actually, what I said was we don't receive any analysis or pertinent details. We get a lot of information. So I just want enough information replaced with any analysis or pertinent details. Everybody okay with that? No. 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 You don't like that? Carolyn? You're, you're batting zero on this. The only thing yeah, I kind of expected that today, but that's all right. That's okay. Ah. The only thing I heard about is the typos being changed. I have a second to write for that. Okay. Sure. Want to try for anything else, Carolyn? Um, no, actually, I think the auditor explained the difference between the policy and his recommend recommendations to the library. So I'm good. Okay. Dan? Linda? Oh, Linda, you already went. Dan, you okay? Sue? Okay. Linda, you okay? He's looking at Are you not talking to me? Oh, yeah. I, I did. But then he looked I meant at Karen. you. I did. Didn't I did say Linda looked at you. Does that bother you when I do that? You sure don't look at You didn't feel the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. Okay. All right. Uh, Approved. Yes. Correct. All right. Uh, Dan, you want to take the roll, please? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Yes. All right. Has anyone registered for public comments? Uh, 
Ну, да, да. No public comments. Oh, no. Well, wait, wait, wait. He wanted uh -oh. public comments. Did he sign the wrong sheet? Oh, that's right. We should probably just ask oh, the I'm residents sorry. if they want to speak. Maybe they forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot. Well, then I'll come back next time. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> okay, I'll end up, but I got to say this first. I'm sorry. This is very important. No, no. Because it's not the sheet. No, you can sign it. Did you sure. sign it? So in addressing the board, speakers will be limited to five minutes per registered individual and 30 minutes overall. Oh my gosh, we have seven people. Um, uh, all speakers maintain a professional demeanor. Uh, and, I, and I do like to remind people that this is a public comment, not a public... Um, <laughs> Gentlemen is ready. I'd like to remind everyone that this is a public comment. Not a public, not a board discussion, nor a board question and answer period. This is just for people to make comments. Though um, trustees or the director may answer a simple question at a time if they can fit, but this is more for public comments. And our first speaker is Peter Palermo. Yes. All right. right. Thank you, Peter. Uh, I'm a retired high school teacher, so I like to have a visual. Do you mind passing me down and take a quick look? Uh, I may be out of place here by addressing you, um, but um, first of all, I want to thank you for all the work that you're doing. Uh, I really appreciate this board. I mean, it's quite intimidating to come here and speak to you after an audit. Okay, I mean, this is one time low, you know, this is really something. Uh, my thought is basically, um, like I said, I'm an Owls resident, I've been here for 45 years. I love the library, I love the programs, and you can see in front of you, I gave you a paper from the um, chair yoga class, run by a woman named Joan McGee. The class has been wonderful. Monthly, I I want to thank you for giving it to us. I, I think everybody appreciated it. It's really been great. But in the last two months, there's been a few problems. It seems like last month, there was a lot of people in the class. I said, okay, this is fine. And then just this last month, this November class, one person shouted across the room, wasn't this great? Joan is offering this class for free. And I said, yeah. I, you know, I didn't want to speak up. The person was ill informed. I said, she's not offering it for free. And then Luckily, one of the younger librarians came in, and he presented a check to Joan and said, here, here's your monthly pay. And, oh, that's fine. Okay. But my thought is, you know, that was great. But after the meeting, Cecilia, you all know Cecilia, right? She ran a question and answer session, and there, half the people stayed. It was a good incentive. They gave a $5 Panera card, which, you know, helped a lot. So half the people that stayed were non-residents. I said, well, that's fine, you know, that this is being offered. But the problem being, uh, in this last class, there was a young man who was operating the class. He kept letting people come in, come in, and all of a sudden we're doing a chair yoga class, and I'm bumping into people. And I didn't think this was, you know, an appropriate thing. Joan is a wonderful person. She would just probably say, well, we'll, we'll deal with it. Well, it's fine for Joan who's up in the front of the room, <laughs> you know. My, my wife is a stroke victim. We have to sit in the back. And, you know, people keep coming in continuously. And I said, well, no, wait a second. So the way I'm looking at this is that uh, if you notice, Mather charges $5. If you go down to the bottom, Park Ridge charges $5. Granted, they're not on the reciprocal program there we are with Chicago, but all of a sudden it's for free. And Joan handed this out at her other classes. You know, the people from Chicago are flocking, okay? I have no problem with that, but I think the Niles residents should, you know, have first priority. I think Cecilia should be at the door like she is for the Shakespeare Project, you know, checking off dames. She's a good person. The young man that was there, he, he's a little slight. I think maybe, you know, the people I watch just walk, walk past him. So I guess what I'm saying is that can you limit the class? I don't care if other, you know, Residents, but it seems like it's getting bigger and bigger. And I'm a now taxpayer, and I just looked at my tax bill. I said, "Wow, you know, that's it's, it's considerable amount of money, isn't it?" I mean, and after this audit, I'm saying, "Well, a lot of money is coming." So, 
if you could consider maybe three things is one, maybe have Cecilia at the door. Two, make, tell Joan that the people need to register for the class. And three, what's wrong with charging them five dollars? You're looking for a place to uh, generate income. Mm -hmm. I know if you're a non-resident, you know, I'm sorry, but my wife and I go to Park Ridge. We went to this one in Park Ridge and there was um, about 20 people. You know, I mean, it's a nice spin. We, we paid it our five dollars each. So, that was just my thought. I may be inappropriate for you know being here for a few years. But I like I said, I'm a Niles resident. I think it's fair. Isn't yeah. there a registered class? It is, but I should give a market here. And she's saying, you know, if she's not even putting it on the list, you know, because so. I I was looking at chapter one and looking at all the things, and I'm like, I thought I saw that. that it, it is registered. It's registered. I registered tonight for the for the next class in December, but I don't think she's, you know, doing They're not that. really checking. And they're not checking names, and I wish they'd do that. And I, you know. Well, thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. I appreciate it very much. Okay. That's all I to say. Thank you very much. Oh, you're doing a great job. You really are. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for sitting through all day. Thank you. 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 So that's what we're now we're almost missing. Yeah. Next year. Sorry. Okay. Um, Susan, maybe you would uh, mull over some of those considerations. We really appreciate yeah. it. I would Thank just, you very much. Very much. I will just point out that we do have grant money covering this now. We've got a grant for programs for older people. So it is. That's cool. It's very yeah. nice. Okay. Maybe we need to limit the number of people. If it's, well, we don't yeah. want it to get over crap. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Maybe next year, but we'll know if Carolyn might have said maybe she would have a comment before the audit. Yes, I don't know. probably. <laughs> if, probably. If someone doesn't want to talk after the audit. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right, we'll note that as well. Uh, our next person is Arianne. Uh, Arianne? I think the supervisors have all signed in. Just oh, no, it's just not signed in. Hold on, I'm going to get your phone. All right. Well, who wants to do five minutes? What? What? Who else? Sir, do you want to speak? No, I'm just watching. Watching? Okay. Are we done with all the comments then? Anybody? Nobody else? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, next, we have our trustee reports, uh, beginning with me. So, um, do you want me to go around, or do you, so, so last time it looked like I was putting people on the spot, I didn't want to necessarily do I'm that. Prepared You're prepared. Right. <laughs> so, so maybe instead of going, specifically asking, I'll do anybody who wants to speak, just, you know, give me a nod and then I'll do the point. So, um, just, and, and I had said that, that the part, part of this, is not necessarily show and tell. No. <laughs> well, but, you're showing. Yes, but, <laughs> an opportunity for the trustees to uh, speak about their experiences in the library. Anyway, so I attended a, uh, on Saturday, I attended the, um, a session on uh, putting music to children's books and presenting them more lyrically than just spoken. It was quite an interesting uh, session that I wish I had known 35 years ago. My daughter, but maybe I'll have a granddaughter someday. Uh, was very well attended. Um, clearly, mostly they were mostly teachers, but um, uh, I did I did um, appreciate it, and I suggested to the presenter that she had a session just uh, more geared for parents rather than teachers because it was uh, really a marvelous way to engage the child in these uh, in these materials and these books. That was nice. Anybody else? Um, yeah. Um, I uh, drove down and took three other members to the mm -hmm. conference mm -hmm. on uh, the 24th of October. That was a Thursday, so I took off that day. We spent the entire day in Tinley Park, um, going to seminars there. And um, they were very interesting. One was about our legislative, a couple of legislators spoke at, and they talked about how best to approach them and how not to approach them when they're really, I mean, don't try and meet with them when they're in session or during a certain time. But they really did encourage us to uh, come and meet them uh, when we are in, at home in their offices and to set up an appointment to do that. And even though you might not have anything in particular you want to talk to them about initially, 
So I talked to Tim about that, and uh, if the board wants me to, I will. I was going to make some calls and see if there might be some time when some of us could go visit our legislators, mm. not to talk to them about anything, mm. just, just, to meet them. just to meet them, not to discuss any school board businesses, just to drop in. I was also going to ask them if they wanted to come mm. to the library at some time mm. too. Now maybe you've already done that, Susan. And well, I we have new ones now, so I have not hit the yeah. ones yet. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. that was one of the things they did state is the fact that. Um, if you meet on a casual basis first, and then there, then if you come to them, there's some kind of connection already with you, and then they're more like you know, then it's a more reasonable talk or whatever. Whatever. But what I got is also they gave us the website. They gave us a handout with, with they a gave bunch us of information. A, yeah, but yeah. the website to check and see. What bills are if we're concerned about a certain bill or when they're in session? Okay. And it was uh, LGOV, LJLILJ.gov. You have a better memory than I have. I, I well, I used it at school. Okay. Because <laughs> oh, okay. I told the kids, because we're studying, we were studying about Illinois government and uh, U.S. government, and I said, here, this is how you know if you're interested, this is a website to check. So I memorized it. So as far as meeting the representatives, um, in my uh, recommendation uh, is that they come and have, say, a Saturday at a time that they could uh, sit outside and meet presidents as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe we just have a half an hour session dedicated Okay, great. I think if they're willing to do that, right. I would uh, certainly encourage that. Um, so I will try and talk with sure. each one of them, unless the board has any other thoughts on what you want to do or not do. Okay. So there's also the legislative breakfast that is on yes. President's Day yes. every year. Yeah, I've gone to that. that if, you know, you're able to take the time to go. And they may not show up on Yeah, I've been a little disappointed. And, and um, I've, you know, our legislature is. Legislators haven't really shown up most of the time. I've been we do ones now, so I do. Yeah. 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 I know, I know the people that we saw there were from such a south. Uh, but still, they were very forthcoming, giving us ideas on how to approach and what to do and different things. And I really enjoyed that session. Mm -hmm. And the other session I got a lot out of was the one on switching to no fines which is mm -hmm. something I really was sort of against, but after going to the session, I think that maybe it's not such a bad idea because they had a number of speakers talk about how they had a good experience in their library district switching to, you yeah. know, fine. Uh, if you do have overall do books, I think all of them don't let you take any more books right. out. Mm -hmm. I think all of mm -hmm. them have that policy, yeah. uh, but they don't actually try to get money out of you. I think from what I remember from that, they had uh, tougher policies on how many books you can have out for how much time before you're allowed to take out, you know, when they cut you off. Yeah, because yeah. you somebody could take out exactly. 50 books and, and out move the floor, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that I would do that. No. Never. <laughs> so uh, those are the uh, sessions that I, I found uh, most interesting. And of course, we walked around and looked at all the exhibits too. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's, yes. uh, I did appreciate the opportunity Great. to go. I'm glad you went. Okay, I was going to mention that also. I kind of jumped in on some of hers. Yeah, um, it, I really enjoyed it. I really uh, thought it was uh, <coughs> a worthwhile thing, especially being so close. We didn't have to get on a plane or anything. So it wasn't <laughs> that uh, hassle, a bunch of a hassle getting there. Especially when she drove. Nice. <laughs> um, okay. The other thing is, yes, I took three workshops. Nice. Seriously. The first was Trust the, the pumpkins shirt. made out of shirt sleeves. That's so cute. Nice. The second was the Thanksgiving etching on the. Oh, very cool. See it? Very nice. Okay. I see it. It's beautiful. It's your plate. You brought. No. No. They wanted everybody's plate to be the same, so they had them. So that was very nice. And then I was surprised how much like the etching, the uh, 
cutting out these letters actually looks very similar to that. And this, um, I do want to commend the person who did this workshop. He did it like this because he found frames that he could use in the supplies, and he used the frames they already had. So that was one expense he saved. Nice. Thank you. Well, very nice. Very good. Great. Well, I also went to the workshop. This is nice. the handout. Um, enjoyed our first speaker, which was all about promoting the library and how it's important for the library people, representatives, to have a message, a core message that is not linked with any statistics, and but just a core message exactly similar to the little video that was shown mm -hmm. last week. How, it, how we connect with people in the community in different facets and different areas in the community and what we can do for them. And I really enjoyed the one about the fines, no fines. I too was negative about a no fine policy, but she gave us seven myths about no fine policies. So if we ever discuss it, then we can talk about the seven myths. But, mm -hmm. but, um, well, if you, you know, if you, if you uh, one in a month where we have that on the agenda to discuss that, please. Uh, you know, if you all want to feel that, no, 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 over okay. the course of the next year. So I do think that we should right. probably discuss it. And I've been gathering information. The supervisors okay. have been super helpful with that. So I will be bringing that to the board in either December or January, right. probably. The city of Chicago is fine for you currently. Mm -hmm. They just went. They, they just they, went. They received almost like 400% more uh, returns in materials that people were returning because they weren't. Oh, sure. So not just because of amnesty, because it was right. a period of sure. time for they were going to. Well, I'm not going to pay my 60 cents. <laughs> Breakfast with nice. my father. Nice. Very nice. Thank you for going World today. War II vet, Marine. Um, it was really wonderful. It was packed um, with the families, with um, grandkids bringing their grandpas. It was just very heartwarming. It was a wonderful breakfast from Panera. I mean, it was just really well done, well served. Um, everyone. Did you introduce yourself at all? I, yeah, she introduced nice, him. Nice, thank you. Introduced him. It was very nice. Um, yeah, even when I came in, the people were like asking for coffee, so I'm like, grab some coffee pot and was helping uh. people. <laughs> no, it was really nice. It was really um, very honored. Like everyone who spoke, it was just very heartfelt. Um, they just have a voice, they feel heard. Um, it's just a, a very warm men and women who served our country. It was just a, it was a beautiful event. So thank you. It was very heartwarming. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Give it a thought. Well, I've been in and out of the library, but actually for my own personal needs, I wasn't attending any functions. But I did have time to look at the different artwork up here a couple of times. And I did notice when I was down in the tech lab that it seems like there's been a lot done in our library that I missed. I remember going downstairs for the Friends of the Library meetings, and there used to be a um, um, conference room down there. Now that's not even there. We have, it's more of, um, what's it called? All of our, um, it's a maker space. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what it's called. I mean, it is, it's really different. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed the teens area. I know, Susan, you mentioned some time ago, you put up plexiglass, but I think the plexiglass now is it's even fine. nicer. Yeah. yeah, it looks really nice. But so my question is, I know we talked about this, and you mentioned that you were going to give us a tour. Do you think maybe we could try to schedule that? Because I'd like to really get to check out everything. Sure. I can send out some dates to you guys. Could, well, we, could we do that in a, a meeting, meeting or something? It would take a while. Take a while? Uh, 
Oh, well, I think our meetings often run until 10. Yeah, that's true. How long would that take you? It would depend on how curious you were. If you wanted to ask questions in the various areas, that would that could take a while. If you wanted to go down and see boilers and, uh -huh. sure. and you wanted to be a mention, you'd like to want to get up on the roof and so I, I have to ask Dave if I could get a room room, but he said no. So uh, yeah, you want to get up there. We have a class for that for you. Dave's all open up. Yeah. No, okay, the reason I'm asking is maybe we can uh, try to meet at 6.30 for one of our meetings and then have a half an hour tour of the library before the meeting. Oh, we don't have to do it all at one time. That's true. <clears throat> yep. One floor at a time. Seriously, <clears throat> so that would be a way of doing it okay. too. Where you divide up one section. That's true. Sure. Each time. This okay. way it doesn't take as long. See what I can figure all out. Right. We'll Thank you very much. Oh, just, you might start hard for some of us to get here. Well, that's the thing, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking just... maybe not earlier, okay. before a meeting. Yeah, yeah, she's right. Maybe Especially with the time. weather being nuts, or it will be, sure. you know. But let's let's try to schedule something. Maybe we could end early. I mean, <laughs> <that it gets> <laughs> <laughs> <somebody> <laughs> last. Maybe we'll all win the lottery then. <laughs> <laughs> Um, first of all, I wanted to, I don't know, I can think about this up to congratulate the Mass Library on being um, one of the top workplaces. And yeah. 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 As a former employee, I agree that it yes. is a fine, fine place to awesome. be employed and do great work here. Um, and I wanted to mention that we took advantage of this show your car, get mm -hmm. a deal. You buy a sandwich at Portillo's, you get a free lunch drink if you show your library card, and there's a lot of other good deals here. So, Superdog, that's what I meant. Yeah, it's a great program. I meant, sorry, I meant Superdog. I didn't mean to get Portillo. Superdog, sorry. Thanks, Superdog. All right, I'll be too long. I want to go to Portillo. Thank you very much. All right, next item on the agenda is the Treasurer's Report. Patty. Okay. October is the fourth month of the fiscal year, so it's 33% of our way through the budget. The library overall expenditures are under budget by 25% of the total budget. Page 10, if you're following. Um, total revenues are 40% of the budget. Property taxes, 47% of the budget. Uh, replacement taxes, 50% of the budget. Fines, 40% of the budget. Investment income, 61% of the budget. And passport income, 35% of the budget. Salaries, slightly lower than budget at 32%. Page 11. Library materials at 39% of the budget. Library operations expense at 31% of the overall category is just a little under budget. Page 12, general and administration at 27%, a little, 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 excuse me, 27% of the overall category is just a little under the budget. Page 13, employee fringe benefits is a little under budget at 30%. Utilities, a little over budget at 34%. Capital expenditures, under budget at 0%. Page 14, buildings and equipment maintenance, under budget at 26%. Great. Any questions on the treasurer's report? No, oh, very good. Thank you very much, Dave. All right. <clears throat> I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $268,154.03 and payroll expenses of $282,861.62 for a total of monthly expense of $551,015.00. And sixty-five cents. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Any second. Second. Okay. Diane, second. Second. All right. Any discussions mm -hmm. on uh, payment of bills? Uh, Karen. No. No. Patty. No. Uh, and Linda. Carolyn. No. No. Susan. All right. Diane. Take the roll. 
Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. All right, next item on the agenda is the director's report. Susan, thank you. All right. Um, I um, wanted to let you know a couple things. One thing is that the deadline, the early bird deadline for the Chamber's Christmas party is Friday, and it is a $10 difference, the early bird and the not early bird. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to send this around in the hopes that you will either sign up on Sign Me Up or No Thanks. And uh, so Diane can register people and we can save that money. I was going to ask you that, so thank you. And then also on your calendar you'll see that um, the early bird deadline for PLA, the Public Library Association Conference, is coming up. I'm going to send this around if people want to take a quick look at the uh, little brochure on that. I wanted to let you know that um, we have, the village asked us to lend us parking spaces for Holly Jolly, and I agreed to that. In fact, they probably have something out in the parking lot now that was one of, over at Culver. They're not borrowing our spaces here, but it's, it's going to be right it's over there. Because you're doing it at the village this yes. year, right? Yes, so I agreed to do that. And they um, are being very nice, and they are actually bringing construction equipment to the library tomorrow for a children's story time. So we give them something, they give us something, we're trying to be good neighbors. What kind of construction stuff are they doing with the children's story time? I'm thinking about that. The whole the whole East Lab would be fully equipped. I don't know exactly okay. what. Right. And they did warn us that if it snows, all bets are off. Okay. Yes, they'll be busy. Sure there's no end longer. Well be a truck. Okay. Well, um, for my report, I just wanted to highlight the fact that we did receive this $4,000 grant from Age Options that will be all going for um, materials, programs, uh, equipment, all kinds of things for not seniors but older adults. We were told that they like older adults. Um, so you're thinking of paying for yoga? Yoga, I would think it would be start coming out of that, yes. Um, and there will be a number of programs like that. Um, and there are a few, a few strings with the grant that we have to do a couple particular kinds of programs, um, but it's really fairly minimal, and it's a you know a nice chunk of money. Yeah. And it's possible if that works out well that next year we can apply for their next level up, which would be cool. I think an innovator grant, where if we had a particular project we wanted to implement, we could get even more money than that. Yeah. So I was very happy with that. I was very happy to get the uh, top workplaces award, which you know I. Yeah. I want to caution everybody that it's not based on like we have fabulous salaries or something like that because realistically speaking a public library does not have fabulous salaries but it is a nice place to work it's really meaningful work for people and it says something about the way the supervisors work with their staff and yeah they're doing a great job so very happy with that yeah thank you um and so i had um you had asked to meet our new head of adult services, and so I asked her to come and introduce herself tonight, and then I thought that would be a good opportunity for all of the supervisors to reintroduce themselves to you. So I'm going to start with Mary Kay, and um, I'm going to have everybody come to, well, I can't come to exactly the front, but if you could kind of maybe stand behind Linda there, um, and then you'll be on camera, and because so, you know, some of you some of are completely behind us. So you right. kind of come to the yeah. front of the table. I wonder if she's going to be a This is fine. Yeah, no, okay. Or it's fine. Me Sorry, she's standing over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everybody's going to be late. Sorry, it's easier. <laughs> so Mary Kay, why don't you come over here? Okay. <laughs> so I asked Mary Kay to really introduce herself, and then the other people just talk a little bit about their departments. Hey, hi. Thank you so much for the opportunity to um, have me introduce myself and to, for, to meet all of you. My name is Mary Kay Stiff. I've been in libraries for about 20 years now. I can't believe that, but it's true. <laughs> I was just kind of doing the math. Um, I, was, I started out my professional career in school libraries, so I'm very familiar with instruction and working with children of all ages from pre-K all the way through 12th grade. Very familiar with online research tools and um, instruction. Um, about 10 years ago, I made the jump over to public libraries, and I'm just a very avid reader of fiction and nonfiction and very, very avid patron of all public libraries, so this kind of made sense for me. Um, I started out at the Glen Ellen Public Library, where I did instruction of um, kind of technology classes, so all their computer classes. <laughs> Um, and then um, I also was their business liaison, so I did kind of the stuff that Judy does here. Um, worked with the Chamber, worked with the Rotary, uh, and then I also helped with their online collections and helped them start a digital lab, so that was really cool. 
Um, and then about four years ago, I worked, um, I, I started working at the River Forest Public Library, and then um, I, I was there for about four years, and I was the manager of adult services there. So um, there I did a lot of, uh, pretty much collect, did all selection for the entire, um, the entire adult services department. Um, I oversaw teen services as well. We had a middle school right across the street, the way that we do here. But in that library, the um, middle school kids were kind of in my purview. So uh, I, I did a lot of crowd control, um, and I, <laughs> I did a lot of relationship building with the kids as well. So um, that's something that I don't get to do here anymore, but, um, but it, it, was, it was a lot of fun, and I don't always miss it right around that 3.30 time. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I could be running around like a chicken chasing kids, but I'm not. So, so that's kind of actually actually nice, and I can always go down and see them um, when I want to. So, that's a little bit about me. Does anyone have any questions for me? I'm really happy to be here. I've been here for about Did two you and a half months. Feel that you needed to be looking at our adult services department. Right? Yes. Did you feel there were any changes that you thought you might want to make, or did you have any vision for that, or? Is there anything that you and Susan talked about making changes in that department? Yeah, you know what, we, um, we're we definitely talking about making it more cohesive. So we've done a, a bit of reorganization in the past, I think, 10 years here. Um, and the outreach department is, is still kind of on their own downstairs. And I'd like to kind of bring them more into the fold and have them be more part of our department and um, contribute more in our, our department meetings. So that's one thing we've talked about. We've also talked about um, possibly staffing the desk in the commons area so that um, we are able to uh, kind of um, interact with people more readily right when they come in and um, sort of serve as concierge to them um, and just be a uh, reference librarian slash reader's advisor that's you know well trained and that's kind of there right when they come in. So that's one thing that is a big project that's on my mind. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we just go down the line and have you just really remind us who, who remind them, I don't know who you are, but here. But yeah, and say what your department does. Uh, hello all, I am Suzanne Wolf. I am the head of digital services. Uh, we, I manage the kind of departments in the lower level of the library, also known as the basement. Um, and we do a lot of the instructional classes, everything from uh, Ruth does an amazing computer boot camp teaching the seniors how to really navigate a keyboard and a mouse, um, all the way up to some of the crafts that we have here on the table. Um, we really I have an amazing creative and innovative staff that really come up with some amazing projects. They have all the creative skills that I don't. Um, so we do that and then I manage a lot of the, all of the online resources. So all of the databases that we offer here at the library um, the promotion of them, making sure you know everything is connected, and you do need a Niles Library card to use those resources. Um, the ebook collection, which is pretty vast, uh, the kind of the streaming services that we offer, and then just providing the assistance to people using the computers. I actually saw Carolyn downstairs trying to fax something, you know, kind of helping people navigate through those, you know, whether they're trying to print and fax or just log on to check their email and they can't remember that password. So customer service is a big part of what we do. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And then we do provide kind of level one IT support, you know, uh, someone can't turn on the computer for the first line of defense. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Arian Carey, and I'm the head of Youth and Teen. Um, we serve uh, birth through age 18. Um, in our two spaces, we're in the lower level in Teen Underground and on the main floor in Kids Space. So um, pretty much every patron who is physically arriving in the building passes by our space. Sometimes they smile and look in and their kind of face lights up with the colors of the rainbow arch. And sometimes they look and then they just keep going <laughs> quickly by because I think sometimes our, um, our energy is um, a little foreign. But um, we have uh, an amazing space. I love, love, love the way that our patrons um, come and utilize our space. They are um, curious, they engage with the staff, they engage with our programming, they're coming and asking for books that they've seen in the Scholastic Book Fair and maybe that's not in a family's budget to buy all the books that they want at the book fair, so sometimes they come with their little um, paper order form and they are asking for a list of books and we can provide. So I really um, am tickled with the service that we provide. 
Um, our new Tina, not our new Teen Underground, it's, the renovation still feels new, is that weird? Mm -hmm. um, but our Teen Underground um, space is flourishing. We, I think, made a great hire in Teen Librarian, Rachel Colias, who actually stepped forward and volunteered to step into a scheduling um, difference. She, instead of working nine to five, she works one to nine. So we have a continuous, um, face that the teens recognize and they are doing all that good relationship building with and um, that has really um, encouraged growth and attendance in the teen underground. Um, and then we also have another um, not so recent hire but our um, preschool and daycare liaison has come to us with a background from the Montessori classroom and she is tuned into um, a lot of the support services and networks that those teachers are part of and so she's um, reached out to the service provider for their continuing education credits and the class that um, you went to on Saturday was actually something that was led for free so that was a service that she has connected us with and we provide that free programming um, we invite the educators because they need those for um, those credits, but then we also open it to parents as well. So it's been a nice addition. So um, our range of programming is, um, I think, meeting the needs of our patrons. And I like that flexibility that um, that we can kind of serve people on throughout the spectrum of those walking through the Rainbow Arch. So, yeah. The the um, three thirty. It's actually it's three o'clock here. Like you can hear the footfall race past the, the window, and then all of us stand up and report to our stations. Um, the teens show up around three thirty. Um, the younger subset of teens is here around three thirty, and then it seems like the kind of later high school, um, older group comes after their after school shifts or. You know, later in the night for more serious study. So it, it is kind of not two distinct groups, but they, they do overlap. But there are two kind of different groups using that space. Thank you. Thank you. I just like the Franken toys. Those are pretty fun, right? Yeah. Just um, kind of an all call. A, a lot of the programming that we do, we send out an all call to staffs, so like everyone everywhere. Do you have any? junk toys that you can contribute or do you have any Kleenex boxes can you start saving your Kleenex boxes or your toilet paper rolls and then what comes in means we don't have to go out and buy those supplies and we kind of are recycling in the building so we'll send those board of So, because we do have a tech department, but uh, Victoria's not here. My name is Richard Volzhnichka. I've been uh, probably working here at the Niles Public Library since 1996. Um, a resident of Niles since 85. Um, I'm in charge of the IT department. Um, there's two of us, but sometimes there's like five or six or seven uh, mm -hmm. as we spread ourselves across uh, the entire staff and helping them um, with their duties and the duties that they have for the patrons. Um, any questions? I'm not going to bore you with a lot of stuff. You'll see me at board meetings sometimes or motions that I present for uh, large purchases. Um, the stuff that Greg has been telling you that we're doing, a lot of stuff this year. Um, so tonight we're in a motion in front of you for reviewing our automation uh, the technology. Uh, next month we're going to be redoing all our servers and our infrastructure, our storage area networks. So all this tough type of stuff helps what you hear on a day-to-day -day basis, and especially at the board meetings of all the different programming, all the different um, ways we reach out to the community. Uh, there's a support back there, and it starts with administration, and the financials, mm -hmm. and facility services, IT. Mm -hmm.
quick question. So yeah. you do IT work for all the staff, uh, everyone here at the library. Yes. Do you also um, help the digital services department too? In terms so the way we work is the digital services. services so sure. So all the different departments that are patron um, facing. facing um, so we'll have adult services, we'll have digital services, which typically work with the adults, and then youth services and, and the extension of team. They all have some function of technology, and we either set that up or help them uh, operate. Uh, digital services is a little bit unique because they have two additional staff members that will help the entirety of the staff with like that first level of tech support that Susie alluded to. That way we don't have to have a larger IT department running around and trying to help someone doing like a um, mail merge or something like that. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep IT focused on network oriented right. things. Right. And the kind of troubleshooting goes to digital services, but then they escalate to IT mm -hmm. if they need to. So for example, uh, typically everyone has some sort of copier jam or printer jam. I won't respond to that. That will be something that a tier one person on the staff will respond to. And if there's something completely wrong with the machine, there's a network problem with it, I'll respond to that. Mm -hmm. That way it allows me to do a lot more things. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No, sir. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks for today. Mm -hmm. Dave Dabrowski, maintenance security, um, the nuts and bolts of the building. I fix it. <laughs> Anybody needs help, whatever needs to be done is usually passed on to me and then I try to work through things and get things done. Usually my, a lot of my stuff is done early in the morning when the lights are still off. So and then we don't do a lot of things during the daytime unless it's behind the scenes. So I mean, if somebody needs something, they call me, we get it fixed, whatever needs to be done. I'll give you some minor hats and then we'll get you on the roof. Speaking of security, it's been on my mind lately. I'm sure it's on everybody's about shootings and all mm -hmm. this kind of jazz. Uh, Craig, do you think we as a board need to have any kind of a discussion on the ad or procedures or notifications for the police or how we... Uh, well, don't we, 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 we have a safety yeah. committee that has worked on that. Dave and Cindy are both on the safety committee right. and they work on that. We've had the uh, police department out here yeah. working with the staff. And, yeah, Tor Benny has been yeah. out here a few times. And I think Cindy's working on a shooter. I think we've done, we've done a shooter uh, item and uh, that sort of stuff like that. So it's something that's always on everybody's mind. Like yeah, yeah. Alice 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 is pretty new. It's, yeah. it, I don't think Alice no. is what they use in the schools. Yeah. No, this is we're just basically using whatever Niles presented the, the last time. Yeah, right? the, the yeah. police department yep. okay. Maybe at some point. We can review our it's just, just that would, Yeah, that would not be something we would do in an open session though. That would be a private. Yeah. 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 Dave's the man. Alright, so that those are all my supervisors. I do have one more thing. I hate to say it. Ma'am, I don't know who I am. <laughs> Hello everyone, Sasha Vasilik, Head of Public Relations and Marketing. Um, my job and the job of my team is to communicate um, all the things that are happening at the library to our residents. So we're responsible for the newsletter, e-newsletter, social media, electronic sign, websites. Um, any sort of promotion of the library comes through the marketing department. Thank you. The producer of this uh, board meeting. Yes, yes. All right, so I do have one more thing to cover with you. It has been a long time since we have updated the strategic plan. Um, so I, I will not review the whole thing. I have it written out here. You should be getting a copy coming around. Okay, here it is. It's so I just wanted to highlight a couple things, and then I'm very happy to answer any other questions that you have concerning it. But these are the things that we've been working on the last few months. Um, as you know, I've been talking for a long time about needing to improve our wayfinding and our interior signage, and have come to the conclusion that it's just not something that we can do all by ourselves. So I have hired product architecture, our architects from the last renovation, to work with us on developing a signage plan. And so um, 
They have begun working on that. The main focus of it is to try to get signage on the rooms. As you know, if, if walking around, you can sometimes see the Kelly Green um, signs that date back from 1998 on some of the room signage. Um, we need to have better visibility to flag where different rooms are. And then we need uh, we need signage that tell people which way to go when they get to a certain point and they don't know which way to turn to get where they need to go. We need to have what they call um, things to get them past the bump points. So that is one thing we are working on now that is underway. Um, as Mary Kay mentioned, we are considering ways to use the Commons desk downstairs, and I think that Adult Services has um, got some wonderful ideas about that. So we're excited about that. Um, under the investment for improve internal and customer-facing processes, the second paragraph down, I just wanted to highlight the fact that the new library app fits into that. That's part of making it easier for customers to use the library's catalog and website and things like that. And it's, it's uh, increasingly popular. One of the main things that it gets used for is the circulation staff have realized that sometimes people come in without their library card, and it means they sometimes can't pick up their holds or um, they don't have ID. And so she, uh, some of the library staff have, have told them, you know, if you put the library's app on your phone, then you don't need to carry your library card anymore. So that's where I think a lot of our use is coming from. Is there information somehow how to download that app and where to get, where to access it, or you just yeah. go look to the Atlas store? And yeah, it's just in whatever store you would be getting your regular app. And you search for the library's name. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Susie and Sasha worked on the app, got it, getting it rolled out. So they did a great job. Um, then I we had had a goal of making it easier for people to get library cards, and in particular when we were off-site giving people library cards, and we had just been having people fill out forms, and then making them come in and show ID, or mailing them, and it was not a very satisfying experience for anyone, and so now we have worked it out so that we can get them entered in on an iPad right away, and give them, they walk away with their actual library card, which I think is, you know, something, they might then go to somebody and say, look, I just got my library card, which they're never going to go to somebody and say, look, I just filled out a piece of paper from the library. So I think that that's progress. Um, I'm just kind of whipping through this, but as I say, when you read through it at home, if you have questions, I'll be very happy to answer. On the next page, focus to expanded community engagement. I just wanted to highlight that Cindy, who did not want to come up and introduce herself, but Cindy Rodemacher, the assistant director, um, has pulled together a data task force, and they have been really starting to dig in on the demographics of the district, and they uh, will be pulling some information for you soon. Cool. Yeah, they've been doing some great work. It's been really interesting. Um, let's see, under exploring community partnerships, um, I just wanted to make sure that you all know that the Chamber of Commerce has a uh, Tuesday morning breakfast meeting that where there's always a speaker and is it the brunch cafe that supplies the brunch cafe supplies breakfast and yeah and so um, it's it's getting really nice numbers we're getting great attendance and it's people that don't didn't even think to come in the library before so that has been it's Tuesday morning it's the third Tuesday of the month so it's just it's, it's always like the day before the board meeting it is a chamber of commerce conference. chamber of commerce Yes. So but the library is a Chamber of Commerce member, yeah. so you all early. can come. Yeah. It is an early meeting. Yeah. Uh, yep. yeah. And then you get a few, uh, just a very brief period to pitch whatever you want to to the rest of the group. So how, fortunately, how do you, how do you, is there somebody standing at the door to let people in? Yeah, yeah somebody from the in. chamber stands at the door. Ah, okay. The chamber employee yeah. lets people in. Susie is on the executive board of the chamber now. So where is it? It's in the large meeting room, the Commons meeting room. Yep. On uh, focus three on the next page, focus staff development. Um, the supervisors are all working with their staff to develop what we're calling task maps. We used to call them more like succession plans, but that sort of implies like people are leaving. We didn't want to put it that way. We wanted to put it more like we want to know what you're doing in your job. We want to then work on your job description in part based on that and then reshape the job descriptions to highlight some of the things that are in the strategic plan to make more, you know, make it clearer that it's part of people's jobs to do community engagement and to have excellent customer service. Um, under the next one, we develop a program strategy. Um, we are beginning a program audit. They've already started collecting information for a program audit for March 2020. So that means every program that they do for that month, they will be uh, 
analyzing that program and uh, sending me information about it, um, I want to, and then I will be reporting back to the board, uh, you know, just information in general about our programs over a particular time, and it will be based on that. I do want to make sure you understand that the raw data I will not be passing along to the board. I want the staff to feel free to experiment with programs, and you're going to have failures. You're going to have crash and burns sometimes, have your attention, and I, that should be between them and me, but I will be reporting back to you um, some of the results of the audit. So I think that should be interesting. And if, we, if this goes smoothly, then we will start doing it twice a year. So it will be more consistent. Um, and then on the last, well, at the bottom of this last page, um, consider best ways to provide library services and collections to non-English speakers. Uh, one of the things that we've been having trouble with is kind of getting a grip on who the non-English speakers are because it's constantly changing. But they've started adding that as a field in the library card. Um, data, the database, and so Athena, who uh, couldn't be here tonight, the, her most recent one, I just put it on the back because so I thought you would be interested just to kind of get a quick review of what sorts of people are getting library cards here. These are just our residents. These are not the uh, reciprocal card holders. And so you can see that our top language spoken of the people that have that in their field, which is only a, a little over 3,000, but they're adding it now. So the top one is obviously English with two, over 2,000. The second one, though, is Spanish at over at, at 200. Mm -hmm. So it's giving us, you know, gives us and good ideas Polish. for programs and, yep. So is this done for new cards or when cards are renewed? I don't know. I both. just renewed my card. Okay. And, and I wasn't asked. Yeah. Okay. But so, maybe yeah. the, the person so knows me, so maybe they just. Yeah, yeah, the, well, that could very well be. It so probably is going to be more than new cards, then. That does make sense. So that's just a very quick overview, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew that we're still working on it. Um, I think it is getting to be time to start thinking about doing a new one, because on the fourth point, the uh, enhanced community awareness and alignment, we've already done most of the tasks on that list. When is our strategic plan? <laughs> Five year plan, and we're at the end of your three. Uh -huh. so it is good to start. It is. So, I started thinking about it, I'll start talking with you about it. And that is all I have for the director's report. Does anyone have any questions? Very good. Nice. Thank you so much, and thank you to the staff for showing up and giving us over the And if any of you need to slip out, I know some of you have children, yes. if you need to go, thank yes. you for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, under new business, do I hear a motion to adopt ordinance 19-04, an ordinance levying and assessing taxes of the Niles Main District Library, Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2019, and ending June 30th, 2020. Second. Okay, so you uh, remember that uh, we've had two months of discussion on this. The first month was somewhat preliminary. Last month was uh, rather extensive, and the board came to a general agreement of increasing it at 1.9 percent. Anybody want to say anything further on that? I just like to add um, a note. Um, I don't know if you all know that last night at the village board meeting, um, the trustees did pass an ordinance for the distribution of the funds from the, the Milwaukee Tui Redevelopment Project um, to be distributed by the Cook County Treasurer. So um, that is in the works, and I know we talked about the possibility of receiving funds from them for a couple of years. Um, the numbers I heard tossed around, and they may not be accurate, a year or so ago when it was a conversation, I think Greg brought it up, was something like 170 or 190, but I don't know at all what the actual dollar amount is now. 170,000? Yes. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know the details. Um, but I'd like you to consider the fact that you will be receiving, I'm sure, a substantial amount of money, and maybe that could be um, considered as 
deducting it from your need to have a levy increase. I mean, we're only asking for 134000 right, from the residents. And I don't know, Greg, have you heard anything further on what the library's percentage might be? Well, um, you know, generally, uh, generally the proportion of the library's taxes compared to the total tax rate is about a 5% relationship. So, you know, I, I think in, in, um, in the district, we have tax rates anywhere from 8.5% uh, to 10%, and the library is at right around 4.47 uh, I'm sorry, 0 .47 or, or thereabouts, so it works out to about 5% you know, overall. So, so oh, five percent of uh, three point uh, four million would be about one hundred and seventy-five. Yeah, about one hundred seventy, seven hundred seventy-five, something like that. And throughout the years, um, I've heard any, I've heard numbers as high as one ninety-five and as low as one fifty. Okay. Um, and what's going to drive it is the um, relative values of the properties and the relative tax rates applied to those properties. So you might have, you know, you might have a very uh, valuable property that's being taxed at 8% and our portion there from that property would be higher than 5%. You know, um, you, you might have uh, uh, less expensive properties or or more expensive properties that are being taxed at close to 10% overall, so our portion would be much closer to 5%. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to say until the county actually does, uh, does the application. Okay. I, I just wanted to mention that I think it's a substantial amount of money, and it certainly could sway us not to need to increase the levy. Um, it, did they have a, a date for when that payment would come? Well, this TIF... I, or this redevelopment project ends December 31st. I, I don't, I didn't hear, I didn't go to the meeting. I've gotten this information just from conversation, so I don't have the specifics. So the, uh, um, a TIF, a Tax Increment fin Financing District, it has a 23-year life. That's the, it can end earlier. Or the absolute uh, highest uh, or longest length is uh, 23 years. 23 years is December 31st. Um, my understanding is that the um, uh, they're sending the paperwork to the county, and then the county will do the calculations. And then, however long it takes the county government to work through those things, then you know that's when we'll see it. So we really don't know. Could, could be soon, it could be I was going to say, just, a lot of times when we're waiting on the county, we're waiting quite a while. Mm -hmm. now, the other, yeah, so, so it might not come even until the summer. Well, I don't know if it would be that long. I think it would be a little bit faster than that. You know, one of the things I, I consider is, is when, um, when, it's, when it's time for the tax bills to go out, they go out pretty quickly. When you pay your tax bills, you know, we see in the library, we see those portions very quickly. <coughs> You know, um, otherwise they're obligated to calculate and pay interest um, on those amounts. So you know, it might it might be sooner than much sooner than the summer. Um, I, it's just hard to say exactly. When. I don't know if we'll see it before the end of the year if the county will actually process a bit fast or yeah. close. But if, if they don't, I would expect it to be shortly after the close of the year. So uh, I just want to make a couple of comments um, about that. So um, coincident with the termination of the Milwaukee 2 e TIF, the property that was in that TIF, they draw a circle around the property and that becomes the TIF district. The property in that TIF comes back fully onto our tax rolls, mm -hmm. not to the library's tax rolls. So what happened uh, 23 years ago is they took that property and they froze it. Mm -hmm. So if they were uh, and, and they freeze it in terms of valuation. So if it was, if you have a piece of property in that tip and it's valued at $100,000, you know, all we get, all the library gets out of it is taxes on $100,000 valuation. Mm -hmm. 
Because of the way that TIF operates and, and because of its objectives, in all likelihood, that property increased in value. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, they might have torn it down and rebuilt it. Yeah, but yeah. after 23 years, you would anticipate it's increased in value. Right. So maybe it's worth two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars now. So now that excess over a hundred thousand comes back onto the tax rolls, and we'll start to see we'll start to see tax revenues from that. Sounds like great news, and it is for a very short period of time. Because in the meantime, the village has created, uh, I believe, it's four additional tips. Okay, so they've. You know, they've uh, uh, ac actually were part of a TIF. We're part of this TIF right here, where, or I think it's over here, where um, Milwaukee, I'm sorry, Oakton and Waukegan um, going down to the uh, uh, Fifth Third Bank. Um, so uh, it's created additional TIFs. Over time, what's going to happen is those property values are going to rise, but we're not going to see the additional. Right taxes off of that. So yeah, it's here's something, but I'm gonna take something away. Yeah, you know, over time. You know, and I'm not exactly sure what you know what the targeted impacts are overall and how that's going to affect uh, what the library sees in terms of tax revenue. Okay, then I just had one last comment. Um, as a trustee I really believe we need alternatives to tax increases for funding the library. And increasing taxes, to me, just undermines real objectives. So I'd like you to think long and hard before increasing the levy. But that's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> does anybody want to entertain a discussion on lowering the levy in light of uh, um, possible 150000 170000 coming in? Yeah, yeah. It seems so uncertain at this point. It's too risky. Maybe yeah, they. Yeah, like he says, they're going to they're adding new tips. So I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Well, then let's. Uh, Let's take a, uh, a roll on that thing. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Penn? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Ken? Yes. Sip? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a question for the board. Um, how quickly do we think we need to get through the next item? Because uh, I need to take a break. But if we don't need to take a break, that would be great. I think we're Very good. Very good. Just one more thing to go One more thing to go yeah. Yes. Okay. Your motion. Okay. So I now need a motion to approve the expenditure of $78,053.44 in annual installments of $24,720.44 and two additional payments of $26,666.50 over the next three years to be paid from the Special Reserve Fund for the purchase uh, renewal of service and support from the library's automated materials handling equipment, self-checks, hardland terminals, and supporting RFID systems from Biblioteca with an option to purchase an additional two years at a discounted rate. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Great. The memo for this is on page 60. Susan, can you give us a very quick overview of this purchase so I don't have to go on my break? Yes. Um, now there are two people in the room that know a lot more about this than I do, but let me just briefly explain, and then if you have more questions, say can jump in. Sure. Um, so the automatic materials handler is the sorter basically downstairs where you know we've got the conveyor belts and everything and we purchased it six years ago when the library was being we were going through the renovation and now it is uh, it's time to renew the um, service and support contract. Rich originally negotiated with them, got the number down to a really good level for a five-year contract and then went back and asked, well, what if we just made it a three-year contract, but we had an option to purchase another two years, and they agreed to that. So that doesn't lock us in for a full five years 
further, but this will cover the handler itself, the self-checks, the credit cards, the RFID system, everything that we would need to support that system. So anything I missed, Rich? Anything important? All right. Okay, and this is in lieu of buying a brand new system, right? Yes. <laughs> Which would be we not to do this very, very expensive. All right, anybody got any comments on this one? So, so the approved extension of 70,000 annual installments, that's $24,000 a year for three years, and then two additional payments. It's, it's the 24 first is the first 24. year, and then the two payments of the 26. Uh, it says over the next three years, but I think that means over the next three years. <coughs> over the three years. Well, yeah, so uh, the total was 78000 for three years. Over three years. Over three years, which is, um, uh, the first year is 24-7-20-44, and then the two <coughs> years in years two and three are 26 six, 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 Okay, and what about the... Two optional years? The two optional years would uh, uh, continue at 26, 66, Okay, all right, that was my question. And it's probably more than <coughs> that because it says annual <coughs> of 24,000. Yeah. It's really just one payment of 24,000 yeah. right. and then two, yeah. two mm -hmm. and two other payments of 26 over okay. the next three years. I think Diane even tried to say that. Sure. The first year is a little bit less because we have some proration going on. Okay. Because during the construction, we incorporated some of our equipment earlier as the parts of the building were being renovated and opened up to the public. So there's put some proration there. Okay, great. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? No. Mm -hmm. Carolyn? So then what's the total amount we're approving tonight? $78,053.44. So we're not considering the two additional no. years? No, not at the moment. Okay, that's fine. Um, then I have a question. I thought we had some discussions that um, either we needed, did we need to upgrade that sorter and it's very costly? Is that something that's covered under what this will be covering? So uh, at, at the time we, um, we, we were speaking about this in, in the June-July time frame, mm -hmm. there were still a lot of unknowns. Oh, okay. Um, and what we've been able to, the information we've been able to get from the biblioteca uh, is that the operating system that's on the machines that we currently have uh, will be supported by agreement, special agreement with Microsoft. Uh, uh, at least for the next five years, uh, okay. that, you know, that we've talked to them about, and that's why we went through a five-year uh, support agreement initially, and then, you know, and then uh, possibly, uh, or then certainly for the next three. Um, yeah. Okay, and so, and then that also includes not upgrading the scanners because they're now they're going to accept the software, or the software is accepting them now for more time than the software. Okay. All right, I got it now. Sorry, it just sort of confused. Yeah, that's great. All right, I understand. Thanks. Sue? So, yeah. That's all great. Good. All right, Diane, please take it. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Great. <clears throat> Is there any other? Yeah, don't kill me. I have two. And I know you're holding on there. We all are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yes. Um, I had a question. And I guess I missed it under the director's report. It was regarding um, server virtualization upgrade projects. Just want to make sure I understand, we are getting new servers. Is that what this indicates that we're going to be approving next month? Yes. OK. Um, is it all of our servers, a portion of our servers? How are we doing that? It's all of our servers. How many servers do we have? I don't even know that. Well, we've got four uh, pieces of equipment. And um, uh, the virtualization uh, allow, uh, software allows us to create about 22 or 23 um, different different server instances within those four pieces of equipment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you I'm know the. Just ask. So what's the backup? That's incredible. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just I didn't have um, a hand. Well, I got confused. Remember, I went through the. Server, SAN, what were those? Um, 
at the last meeting mm -hmm. switches. So yeah. then I saw this, I'm like, wait, I know I saw that. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to know how many um, servers we actually have. I never heard of that, but that's really interesting. No, that's, it's pretty common. Because I thought servers were just like specific to one thing, but to be able to do that, wow. Well, the, the instances that are created within the uh, physical appliances, mm -hmm. they are specific to one thing. But the equipment itself shares resources across all 24 or 20. Three, uh, We're up to 26 right now. 26. Really? Uh, yep. Okay. Service. All right. Good to know. All right. All right. Thank you. That, that's all I needed there. And then Tim's gone. Okay. I needed to share this with him. And then we can go. No, no. Don't rush him. All right. You're no, leaving. I want to okay, say the server. Oh, service. thank you. We'll <laughs> see ya. And then that's it. I just wanted to clarify. Um, remember we had a conversation last month about we thought we were in violation? because of Tim and I meeting, but I sat down and thought about it and we weren't. So I just want to explain to him, we met numerous times and why we were never just the two of you. in violation of OMA. No, and then remember there was a technology committee and he thought because we met, we were in violation because we didn't advertise it. But Susan had dissolved the meeting, the committee for the purpose of meeting with me and Tim. So, so get us up to date with information. So we weren't in violation then. And then he and I met, not as part of this committee, but just to discuss a meeting we had with Greg about the budget process. Yeah. So I think he thought we met in addition, but we didn't. So we're good. Okay. But I guess we can adjourn when he gets there, and I can just talk to him after we and the vice end. President Okay. I could, but I have uh, one other matter. Well, first let me ask, does anyone else have any other matters? Any other, anyone else have anyone wants to bring up? I have one matter, and that is, for the past two or three years, we've usually, as a board, uh, provided some treats to the staff shortly before Thanksgiving. Yes. So uh, I was thinking I about the to, to, to uh, get those again, but I am accepting donations from the other board members. Definitely. So thanks to me after the meeting, if you would choose to do that. Uh, yes. All right, but and unless there's any other others, um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. Motion. Second. Okay, Second. Second. All right. Aye. 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 Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Damien? Yes. Candy? Yes. Linda? Yes. 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 Yes.